A large number of people suddenly start vomiting at a summer festival, resulting in four dead. Investigations soon reveal that the curry rice served at this festival had been poisoned, and the suspect is arrested within a few months. This suspect was later sentenced to death, but a critical piece of evidence had been misrepresented. This incident remains one of Japan's most notorious cases of intentional food poisoning, as well as being considered to have a high possibility of false accusation. This is the case of the poison curry rice. The event takes place in the summer of 1998, at a small summer festival in central Japan. A total of 67 people begin vomiting, with some passing out. The common denominator among them being they had eaten the curry rice that was being provided at that festival. Four of these people would eventually end up passing away. The autopsy reveals that there were traces of arsenic in all four of the deceased, and police investigations also identify arsenic in the vomit of other victims, as well as the curry that was being served on the scene. The police determine this is a case of mass murder through intentional food poisoning, and the hunt for the culprit begins. A few months later, a woman by the name of Hayashi Masumi is arrested for a totally separate case on charges of insurance fraud. As a former insurance saleswoman, she would use her knowledge of the inner workings of insurance companies to profit off of false insurance claims. Hayashi had been making millions by having various accomplices insuring themselves and then consuming small doses of arsenic to appear to be ill, allowing them to receive payments. Hayashi would then receive a cut in return for providing her knowledge and methodology used in these insurance frauds. She would obtain the arsenic through her husband, who ran an insect extermination company, as he would use arsenic to kill insects as a part of his job. Hayashi was then re arrested a few months later for the curry poisoning case, as she was involved in making the curry, and the arsenic she had in her house matched that of the arsenic used for poisoning the curry. Keep that point regarding arsenic in mind, it will become relevant later on. Her trial began in 1999 and would last over three and a half years. She pled guilty to insurance fraud, but claimed she had nothing to do with the curry poisoning. What made this case difficult is that there was no direct evidence that she was the culprit, but eventually she was found guilty and sentenced to death. Hayashi would then appeal the case to the higher court, which would uphold the death sentence in 2005. She then appealed to the Supreme Court, but her appeal was denied. As of 2021, she is still on death row. Ever since online forums became popular in the early 2000s, the poison curry incident has always been a source of discussion, as it was a fairly recent case and the grounds for her arrest and following death sentence were quite vague. Many theorists suspect she had nothing to do with the poisoning and was made a scapegoat. Let's start by looking at the evidence against her. The strongest piece of evidence against her was that the arsenic she had in her house. Was identical to that which was used to poison the curry. But this was later proven to be a false claim. Tokyo Science University, who were responsible for comparing the various arsenic samples to each other, later claimed that the police asked them to simply confirm that the samples were from the same manufacturer. They did not do any kind of testing to see if the samples were the same type of arsenic. Hayashi's defense lawyers would later request Kyoto University to actually see if the arsenic samples were identical, and the results stated that clearly they were not. In other words, the arsenic Hayashi had and the arsenic put in the curry were from the same company, but they were not the same chemical composition. This totally invalidates this piece of evidence, and Hayashi's defense pointed this out to the court, but they still ruled her guilty. This was the only piece of physical evidence, and without this, the grounds for her sentence become seriously questionable. The curry rice was being made by a group of women from the local community, 
with Hayashi being one of them, and it was being prepared in the parking space of Hayashi's neighbor. One thing to point out here is that most neighbors agree Hayashi did not get along very well with other women in the community. They would complain on how Hayashi would not follow rules regarding taking out the trash, how she would not participate in community events, and overall had a general disliking towards her. By the time Hayashi showed up to help with making the curry, it was almost finished. The woman who made the curry tasted it around noon, so it was not poisoned at this point in time. The group then tasks Hayashi with watching over the pot. She claims she kept watch from around 12 pm to 2 pm, and her daughter came to chat with her a few times. Some witnesses claim she was seen around the pot the curry was being cooked in, but she was tasked with watching over it, so that in itself is not suspicious. The testimonies are inconsistent as well. Some say they saw a woman with a white shirt. Some say they saw a woman with a black shirt. Some say they saw the pot totally unattended. If there really were periods of time where no one was watching over the pot, anyone could have slipped in the arsenic. Most of the people who say they did see a woman there claim it was probably Hayashi. The fact Hayashi did not get along with everyone else may have played a factor in these testimonies, as many people would rather give the name of an outcast rather than put their friend in the spotlight for a criminal case. Again, her being there is nothing suspicious. She was just playing her part in keeping watch over the pot. But these testimonies and rumors circulating through the community did taint Hayashi's image, and it would not be long until the media would catch wind of these rumors. This is the most famous video of Hayashi Masumi, of her spraying journalists and cameramen with her water hose. The media and public loved this clip because it depicts an evil, psychopathic woman that would likely poison people for the fun of it. But let's consider the background of how this clip came to be. As soon as rumors got out that Hayashi had been lurking around the curry pot, the media was all over her house, 24 hours of the day. They would use ladders to take shots of her house. They would attach microphones to long sticks and try to eavesdrop on conversations the family was having. Hayashi herself, of course, could not leave the house without having cameras shoved in her face. But also her children would be harassed by journalists and couldn't go to school. Now, I don't know about you, but if me and my family were receiving this kind of treatment, a light spraying of water would seem justified. But at the time, people didn't know about the backstory. All they saw was a crazy woman spraying people. Now, the Japanese police and even the court system are notorious for allowing public opinion influence their actions. It would be fair to say society viewing Hayashi as the culprit had an effect in the arrest and following death sentence, even though the evidence was insufficient. With the police being pressured into making an arrest, Hayashi as a social outcast was an easy target as no one would come to her defense, and the tiniest piece of evidence was enough to convict her. Hayashi being involved in insurance fraud might have been a lucky break for the police, as it allowed them to arrest her and search her house. They found arsenic in her home and may have jumped to the conclusion that she was indeed the culprit. Something to note here is that in Japan, if you are prosecuted, the chance of you being ruled guilty is over 99%. This topic deserves a video of its own, so I won't go into detail here. But I just want to point out that if the police prosecute you for something, it is very, very unlikely that the court finds you innocent. So for Hayashi, the moment the police had the smallest foothold to present her to the court, her fate was sealed. I've made this video in a somewhat sympathetic manner towards Hayashi, but I'm not trying to say she is innocent. The main point I want to make is that from an objective perspective, the evidence seems too little to determine her being guilty. If this really was a case of false accusation, there is still someone out there that killed four people by poisoning the curry. 
However, it has been over 20 years since this incident took place, and I am doubtful the court will ever re examine this case. Do you think Hayashi was the true culprit? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching until the end. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you next time.